Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Shigeru Yoshi. Um, today I will talk about socio-ecological approach to uh, personal and um, uh, geography. And a uh, collaborator on this paper is my graduate students, Minha Lee and Thomas Pollock. Just before I begin uh, my main talk, just very, very briefly, um, my lab at the University of Virginia uh, study culture, social ecology, and well-being. And these are the good-looking graduate students. <laughs> All right, so uh, in general, socio-ecological psychology, my approach, or our approach, is really trying to rethink about personality and social psychology through the lenses of social ecology. More specifically, uh, we use psychological imagination and try to think what kind of thinking and feeling and behaviors that particular social ecology evokes, and in turn, what kind of thinking and feeling and behavior tend to give rise to certain social ecology uh, and so forth. So uh, this mutual uh, constitution is the main part of social ecological psychology. In our lab, uh, we have looked at quite a bit about residential mobility. Uh, we also looked at things like progressive taxation, political climate, actually Matt Motel in this study found that the liberals build up in conservative tend to move to a liberal place, conservative who grew up in a liberal place move to a conservative place and they're happier uh, in that place with that uh, matching. Um, oh, matching part is a different paper actually. Income inequality, uh, rice farming versus wheat, walkability of the cities, etc., etc. So today, uh, I will talk about this personality geography uh, project. Unlike Rich and Vika and Jason and Sam, who are really serious personality psychologists, um, I'm not really serious personality psychologist, so I came about to this project through a completely different project, which was felt understanding, misunderstanding, and um, slope perceptions. And at the time, we were interested in how people estimate the slope, and we found that when people are misunderstood, they tend to overestimate. When they are understood, they don't overestimate the hill, and which kind of makes sense, and we were able to publish in a decent place. But um, more importantly to this project, we have a big five personalities, so we were interested in whether there are individual differences in this uh, slope estimation. So here is a quiz for you. So among the big five, right, personality uh, profile, who would most likely to overestimate the exactly the same hill? Would it be the extrovert, neurotic, conscientious, agreeable, or open people? All right, let's take a vote. So who say extroverts? A few people who read the abstract, perhaps. <laughs> B, neurotic. C, conscientious. D, agreeable. E, uh, open. So the answer here was extroversion. We were really, really, really surprised. We did not expect this at all. We had pretty good sample size, over 200. Correlation is obviously not overwhelming. Uh, but given that in the previous literature, happy mood tend to uh, reduce the slope estimations and so forth, this reverse correlation seems to be quite striking. And there was no other really serious correlation. We statistically control for gender, race, and all other uh, big five personality uh, association remains uh, essentially significant. And most importantly, in another lab, uh, Blair, Gro uh, Blair Gross uh, has replicated this finding. So I started to take this really bizarre uh, finding seriously. So uh, this is how we think about social ecology. So if indeed extroverts overestimate the slope, then we thought maybe they should avoid mountains. Because if it's a steep hill, why would you want to go there, right? And then well, when you take a stair and if you're drunk, you, it feels really, really steep and then you want to avoid that, right? So 
the same thing. Essentially, basic thinking is that if you overestimate the slope, you don't want to go to one point to zero. So that was basic hypothesis. So we just simply asked uh, 921 year students, which one would you like better, ocean or mountains? So right, how many of you say ocean? How many of you say mountains? Wow, I guess we have a lot of introverts. <laughs> so in this data set, uh, 669 people, so 73% chose ocean, and 27% uh, chose mountain. But what was really surprising was that we looked at the big five personality of ocean lovers versus mountain lovers. Absolutely zero difference in terms of heroism, zero difference in terms of openness, zero difference in terms of agreeableness and conscientiousness. But interestingly, we did find uh, expected uh, difference between uh, ocean lovers and uh, mountain lovers. As you can see, uh, ocean lovers are statistically significantly uh, more extroverted than uh, mountain lovers. So it's kind of interesting, but still very, very extractive. What well, we statistically control for SES and all kinds of other things, and this relationship is still uh, this difference is you know, significant. All right, so next we asked, why would introverts like mountains? And one hypothesis is that, well, introverts like me like secluded area, like to be alone. Um, so perhaps that's the, that's the link. So we asked, 226 UVA students, this is the within subject design, so both questions were asked to everybody, random order, but here I present this way. If you want to have fun with friends, which one would you go to, ocean or mountain? Now, the results are almost exactly the same as the study one, when I didn't give any specific situations. However, same people we ask, so if you want to decompress and relax alone, which one would you like to go? The number of people like ocean, but the number moved quite a bit. So 25% uh, became 48%. And this is a highly statistically different difference. So uh, we thought this is interesting, but we continue to reason. If indeed introverts like mountain, then mountainous states should have a lot more introverts than plain uh, states. Luckily, uh, I remember that Sam and Jason had nice state level personality data. So we uh, obtained, well, actually, we looked at the perspective data and we just copied <laughs> into an Excel file. Um, so this is very nice, large sample. The smallest state, I think Wyoming still have over 1,500 participants. I think California is over 70,000. I mean, it's really nice data set. So simply ask, okay, the state with the high mountains, are they more introverted? And that's exactly what we found. So this is the uh, extroversion scale, the highest mountain uh, in each state. <coughs> And you might wonder about all the climates and again incomes and all kinds of stuff. So we also statistically control for densities, populations, and median income, average temperature, number of sun days, rainfalls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The relationship actually was stronger. So this is pretty interesting result. But maybe some state has just one really tall mountain and the rest is flat. So we also looked at the number of mountains. I didn't know what's mountain, what's not, but our website has the list of mountains for each state, so I just counted. <laughs> and the results are essentially the same, and the same thing controlling for various things. So it's very interesting that in three different kinds of network and data set, we found that the introverts tend to uh, like mountain or live in a mountain. But at this point, these are all correlational studies, so obviously we don't know exactly what's the mechanism. One reasonable hypothesis is the self-selection effect, right? Introverts like me choose mountainous place like shallows do. Or it could be that there is a geography effect, that if you happen to be in a mountainous area, 
then that makes you feel reflective and introverted. So there might be the um, geography effect as well. We don't know that. So how can we tell? Well, we have to do some kind of experiment. So that's what we did two springs ago, I think spring 2012. We invited 101 UVA students to the laboratory and then randomly assigned them into one of the three conditions. Either bring them to this uh, secluded wooded area of campus or this plain open spot. Unfortunately, UVA doesn't have ocean nearby, so uh, the flat area, open area was the best we could do. Uh, when it was raining outside, the participants stayed in this wonderful lab space I have in Gilman Hall. Um, <laughs> so 20 of them were stuck there on the rainy days. Sunny day, random assignment into either this secluded mountainous area or open area. Right. So the procedure goes, they come as a group of three to five, have initial discussions and experimental is secretly counting the number of times each participant is speaking, the behavioral measure, and then random assignment will take uh, people out to this place or this place or stay. And then we'll have another discussion. And again, during the discussion, the experimenter is counting how many times each participant is speaking. That's the behavior measure of extraversion. And at the end of the group discussion, they also self-reported during the uh, group discussion how you extroverted were you, and how you observed were you, and so forth. All right. And we did also a manipulation check to make sure uh, this location was perceived to be hilly, secluded, calm, and quiet. And uh, this location was perceived to be open, flat, and more sociable. And there's a huge effect there. So manipulation seems to have worked. So this, to us, was the million dollar question. Does did the geography change personality? Just being in the secluded area makes you introverted. So in the end, I did not find anything, nothing, absolutely nothing. If anything, it's a little bit higher in wooded area. So this is the observer rating. We looked at the self-report. Reserved. So either way, essentially there is absolutely no difference. So frankly, I was a little bit depressed when I saw this thing. I was like, oh, I might find some geography effect. But in the end, there was nothing. So then I took the self-selection hypothesis a little bit more seriously. So what's self-selection effect? If introverts are actually choosing mountains and extroverts are choosing flat or open area, then Introverts should be happy in mountainous area, and extroverts should be happy in open area. And we did measure happiness, state happiness, at the end of the experiment. So here is what we found. In a flat area, uh, x-axis is the state of uh, trait extroversion. So more extroverted you are, you are happier, the 0.42 correlation. In the laboratory, it's 0.2 correlation, so uh, there is typical uh, extroverts slightly happy, although this is not statistically significant. And most importantly and interestingly, in a secluded area, we found a reverse negative correlation, namely introverts tended to be happier, although again, this statistical correlation is not significant, but at least the correlation coefficients here are significantly different from each other. So putting this data sliced differently, the introverts randomly assigned into security area versus open area and uh, lab. So again, introverts randomly put into the security areas at the happiest. Among extroverts, those who were put in the open area were the happiest among the three. So, in conclusion, uh, we think that the mountain lovers tend to be introverted, and we think that introverts choose uh, mountains, 
and essentially it's because introverts feel happier in secluded, secluded areas. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much.